Once upon a time, there was a vast pony kingdom ruled by a fair and just king. When the king passed away, his two daughters, Solar Mare and Philly Moon, inherited the land. The realm was divided into two queendoms called Daylight and Midnight. Although the queens were given equal shares of land, each sister wanted her queendom to be better than the others. They competed for just about everything. The most wealth, the most resources, the most commodities, and the most adoring subjects. The latter was in short supply in the Queendom of Daylight, as Queen Solar Mare taxed her poor citizens until their breaking point to fund her lavish lifestyle. The morale of Daylight's impoverished ponies had fallen so low, the Queen decided to hold a massive celebration to honor some returning heroes from their perilous quest. Six of the Queendom's bravest ponies were brought before the Queen to receive their medals and accolades. Ponies of Daylight, I am pleased to announce that the great terror known as G5 Spike has been vanquished at last. Queen Solar Mare exclaimed, and the gathered ponies cheered in response. Today, we honor these heroes with medals of bravery and feast to their glory. Solar Mare added, using her magic to place the gold medals around each of the six ponies' necks. While the attending ponies continued their shouts and stomps of praise, one of the six heroes pulled another aside. The bright pink earth pony with the bouncy pink mane whispered frantically to the orange earth pony with a blonde mane and tail. Applejack, something is wrong. I didn't even know we were in a story until I heard once upon a time. And when I went to stop the story to find out what the hell was going on, nothing happened. Hang on, did the narrator just narrate me talking to you? But I'm not even in character. This is your doing, Applejack, isn't it? The pony she spoke to gave her a sideways glance in confusion. You ain't the one doing this? This here is normal, Pinky. At least it is for me. Kinda nice to see you get a taste of your own medicine, though. The pink mare's eyes wavered in confusion and fear. All right, all right. If you're really that upset, I'll try and stop it myself. Apple Peasant replied. Pink Peasant guffawed in response. Wait! Pink Peasant? What kind of stupid pun is- Now, now, we must discuss a matter of utmost importance. Solar Mare interrupted, now addressing the heroes personally. My guards have informed me that you six are late on your taxes. <laughs> is this true? The six ponies looked amongst themselves in surprise. A former student of the Queen herself, Book Peasant, stepped forward meekly to reply on behalf of her friends. Your Majesty, we just returned from our royal mission. We haven't had a chance to earn any money since we were away on our perilous quest. Slaying an abomination doesn't exempt you from the law, Book Peasant. Surely you don't expect me to bend the rules just because you <laughs> saved us. <laughs> Solar Mare said, absent of mercy. Uh, can we pay you with these? The yellow-coated, pink-maned pegasus called Quiet Peasant asked, holding up her heroic medal. Those? <laughs> That's not nearly enough gold to cover your debts. Solar Mare scoffed. Well? Pink Peasant whispered frantically to Apple Peasant. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm supposed to have that story breaking up great since the last Pinky Tales, but it ain't working. What'd you do? It's not me, I swear! Wait a minute, I know who's doing this to us! Discord! This is exactly the kind of thing that he'd pull! Pink Peasant narrowed her eyes in anger and clenched her teeth. <laughs> Suddenly, a Draconicus appeared from within Pink Peasant's mane, with an innocent smile upon his face. It was not I! I personally find the story rather... Mm, dull and uninteresting. Nothing fit for the likes of me. I'm going to go hang out in the comments section demanding to know what happened to Spike Nokio with the rest of the internet. Discord, the Lord of Chaos, replied. Listen, life happens! 
some stuff came up. It's a story about Spike, and somehow I have to make that interesting. Wait, he's narrating you too? You can't stop the story? Hmm, seems not. Perhaps there's a bit of good chaos here after all. Oh well, off to the comments I go. I think I'll throw in a couple. Where's Ask Ponies? And when's the next Princess Trixie Sparkle 2 in there as well? <laughs> Discord said with a guffaw of laughter, receding into her mane without another word. Well, do you have your taxes or not? Solar Mare asked, her patience running thin. Applejack, I'm freaking out! This is not okay! Pink Peasant screamed, warranting some unwanted attention from the guards nearby. You're right, Pink Peasant. It isn't okay. I have half a mind to throw you all in my dungeon for such a crime. Solar Mare remarked. Apple Peasant quickly covered Pink Peasant's mouth and shot the queen an apologetic smile. Shh! Just gotta play along for now until we figure this out, okay? Last thing we need is your mouth getting us thrown in a cell. Apple Peasant whispered fervently to Pink Peasant, keeping her voice too low for the monarch to hear. The light blue coated Pegasus hero with a rainbow mane and tail stepped forward to stand alongside Book Peasant. She quickly chimed in, hoping to spare them all a terrible fate. There's no need for that, Your Majesty, because, uh, Fashion Peasant once told me she can spin hay into gold. That was metaphorical, Brash Peasant. My country chic hairwear line is the only thing ponies can afford anymore. Fashion Peasant, a white unicorn mare with a styled purple mane, quickly amended. Hay into gold, you say? Solar Mare said curiously, ignoring Fashion Peasant's response. Then it is settled. I shall have the six of you thrown into a dungeon where you will assist Fashion Peasant in spinning all the hay in the castle into gold. Solar Mare clapped her hooves joyously as she motioned to the guards. Without hesitation, they swarmed the Queendom's heroes, ready to herd them toward their awaiting imprisonment. You have until dawn. If I return and find my hay has been spun into gold, you will be set free, your debts repaid. If not, well, you'll remain in there forever. <laughs> That's called incentive. Solar Mare added, practically preening as she sat atop her golden throne. The six confused peasants were then quickly ushered out of the throne room and away from their own celebration to the dungeons below. They were then unceremoniously locked inside a large, dreary-looking cell that had been stuffed floor to ceiling with hay. Once the guards left, the group of ponies looked a fashion peasant hoping for a miracle. Playing along will keep us from getting thrown into prison! Look at me! It was metaphorical, I tell you! And you expected Brash to understand what metaphorical meant? Well, can't you just try? Brash Peasant inquired nervously, realizing the mess she'd gotten them all into. And how exactly do you expect me to spin anything without the proper tools, huh? Aren't you a unicorn? Can't you just poof us out of here? These cells are enchanted, Pink Peasant. Pony magic of any kind will not work in here. We'll just see about that. I think this is a problem for good old Betsy. Pink Peasant said with a devious smile. Who the hey is Betsy? Brash Peasant asked, while Apple Peasant face palmed into her hoof. My party attack tank. She has a five mile confetti range. <laughs> These walls won't know I hit them. Pink Peasant decreed, putting her hoof into her mane in hopes of producing their salvation. However, after a few moments of searching, the truth finally sank in for Pink Peasant. Her once reality-breaking mane was now nothing more than hairs attached to her head. No, it can't be! It just can't! Oh no, oh no! I can't do this! I can't do this! I'm gonna be trapped here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever! Why can't I stop the story? <laughs> Is that some ponies in trouble, I hear? An unfamiliar voice asked from behind the closed dungeon door. All six ponies watched in shock as a hooded figure entered the dungeon with a devious smile on his obscured face. Perhaps I may lend a helping hoof, he added as the door shut behind him. Or you could have just let us out. 
Not that logic has any place in these here stories. Ping Peasant's eyes lit up and she gasped <gasps> in realization. That's the same voice as the narrator! Who are you? Ah, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves now. The who's and the what's will have to wait. I sense there's a far more pressing matter at oof, isn't there? The figure asked, cutting off Pink Peasant before she could ruin the plot of the story. Seems to me you ponies could use an enchanted spinning wheel. One that can indeed spin your hay into gold. And it just so happens that I have one to trade. The stranger stepped aside, revealing an old wooden spinning wheel that hadn't been there a moment ago. Oh, so our magic doesn't work, but yours does? <laughs> I see what you mean about the logic thing, Apple Peasant. But we have nothing to trade for such a magical relic. On the contrary, those medals around your neck will do nicely as payment. Um, but if you could just make your own gold with the spinning wheel, why would you want our medals? Even Fluttershy's pointing out the plot holes now? What kind of crazy story is this? My magic won't work for me, silly ponies. Why else would I have come? So, what do you say? Do we have a deal? The stranger asked with no further explanation or clarification. With no other choice or means of escape, the six peasants sadly removed and gathered their medals and handed them over to the stranger in their cell. The stranger smiled and tucked the medals away in his cloak. You'll have until dawn, when the enchanted object will disappear forever. Good luck, my little ponies. The stranger said, giddily prancing back through the door and leaving the spinning wheel behind. Pink Peasant was so downtrodden about her lack of control that she couldn't even enjoy the word-for-word -word reference he just made. Once the stranger was gone, Apple Peasant had the thought to check the door, but knew it would be for naught, as her assumptions about illogical storytelling would be correct. Cautiously, Fashion Peasant approached the spinning wheel with a hoof full of hay. She reached out for the spindle to begin the impossible process, when Pink Peasant suddenly cried out in fear. Fashion Peasant, don't! It's a trap! Don't put your hoof on the spindle! Wrong story, Pinky. It's an enchanted spinning wheel? Where do you think he got it from, AJ? in daylight would be moronic enough to prick themselves on a spindle. Perhaps you should leave the spinning to the professionals, Pink Peasant. Fashion Peasant said, worried for the sanity of her friend. Against Pink Peasant's wishes, Fashion Peasant started to feed the hay she'd gathered into the spinning wheel. She's gonna fall into a deep sleep and then we'll never get out of here. Pink Peasant cried woefully, slumping to the ground and burying her face in her hooves. The other ponies watched on bated breath as the spinning wheel began to spin. The hay that Fashion Peasant fed onto the bobbin was transformed into golden threads right before their eyes. <gasps> A collective gasp echoed in the dungeon cell as the six ponies realized they would be saved after all. Fashion worked through the night, her friends taking turns fetching the hay for her to spin to gold. Eventually, the other ponies wore themselves out and slept on the cold stone floor while Fashion Peasant kept working. When the first light of dawn trickled into their dungeon cell, the room was entirely bare of hay and filled instead with spools of golden thread. Fashion Peasant could barely keep her eyes open and didn't have the strength to react when the spinning wheel vanished as the stranger had foretold. As if on cue, the door to the cell was unlocked and opened. The sound woke the other ponies, and they came face to face with their monarch and her many guards. Oh. My. Me! This is incredible! Had I known you spoke true, I would have gathered far more than just the castles, hey? Why, there's enough gold here to weave into golden robes. That's sure to make Philly Moon jealous. Guards! I want all the hay in my queendom to be gathered and brought to the castle at once. Hearing this, Fashion Peasant instantly conceded to her fatigue, fainting onto a pile of golden thread. Ha! A deep sleep! Told you so. But our debt is repaid, is it not, Your Majesty? Book Peasant asked hesitantly. Queen Solar Mare glared down at her former pupil with a scowl.
Your debt is repaid when I say it is repaid, and it shan't be repaid until all of Daylight's hay has been turned into gold. Guards, take these peasants to another cell, a larger one, and fill it with my queendom's hay. Tell me again why we do everything the queen says in this, or any other reality. Apple Peasant's question remained unanswered as the guards ushered the five peasants from their cell, having to carry the unconscious fashion peasant on their backs. They were brought to a new and empty cell. Over the course of the day, guards came and went, filling the cell with the gathered hay from the Queendom of Daylight. Soon enough, the ponies were in a similar predicament as the night prior, but with no enchanted spinning wheel or a mare to be able to spin it. Now what? Uh, should we try the weak fashion peasant? <laughs> Good luck! Unless we have a prince stashed around here somewhere, she is out! Exhaustion ain't the same thing as pricking your hoof, Pink. That may be so, but I think Fashion Peasant has more than earned some rest. If that stranger comes again, maybe we can barter for the spinning wheel and the rest of us can spin instead. Are some ponies looking for little old me? A familiar voice asked, and the ponies turned their heads to see the stranger resting on a bale of hay in their cell. Where did you come from? Are we to waste time asking questions, or are we going to strike a deal? But this time we don't have anything to give you. Actually... Pink Peasant said, trotting over to the stranger with a smug smile. I may or may not have grabbed a few spools of gold thread before we were yeeted out of that cell. I think I'm catching on to your little game, Mr. Mystery Pony! Golden thread! Hmm, it's not worth an enchanted spinning wheel, but it might be just enough for this spell book. In it, you will find a spell that transcends pony magic. One of your unicorn friends might be able to conjure it. Seeing how one of you is getting her beauty sleep, I suppose that means it's all up to you, Bookie. The strange pony said, giving the magical tome to Book Peasant before snatching up the golden spools. Once the spell is complete, the book will vanish. What's up with the Cinderella magic disappearing rule? Pink Peasant asked, though meant it more rhetorically than literally. There came no reply, as the strange pony had vanished as quickly as he had appeared. Book Peasant wasted no time opening the book to find only one passage in its entirety. Huh. It says here that I need a pony subject. Any volunteers? I volunteer Bresh, since she's the reason we're in this mess. Ha! <laughs> you think I'm afraid of some book? Bring it on! Brash Peasant replied confidently. Book Peasant nodded, then turned her eyes back to the spellbook. Silently, Book Peasant read the incantations and summoned forth her unicorn magic. To her shock and delight, her horns started to glow. But unlike its usual pink hue, this magical glow took on a golden tint instead. Book Peasant directed the spell at Brash, who braced for impact. When the magical blast dissipated, the book was gone. The five ponies and their sleeping friend appeared unchanged. Uh, was that supposed to do something? Brash asked, unimpressed. She took a step towards Book Peasant when the stone beneath her hoof started to glow. The five friends watched in awe as the stone beneath Brash Peasant turned into solid gold. Whoa! Did you ponies see that? Brash Peasant proclaimed, reaching out her hoof to touch a bale of hay. It too was engulfed in a magical glow before turning into solid gold. Brash Peasant knocked her hoof against the solidified golden mass to check its legitimacy. Oh yeah! We'll be out of here in no time! Brash Peasant rejoiced. She zipped around the dungeon, touching every bale and piece of hay she could get her hooves on, as well as the stones that made up their prison for good measure. As the room slowly turned to gold, Apple Peasant excused herself from the group to stand in the far corner. She could predict exactly how this scenario would turn out. Once the room and all its contents were golden, Brash Peasant rejoined the group, hovering above the ground in flight with a victorious smile. Our problems were solved in ten seconds flat! We make a pretty awesome team, Book Peasant! Hoof bump! Book Peasant reacted without thinking, raising her hoof to meet Brash's. Once she made contact with Brash, however, Book Peasant herself was engulfed in light and transformed into solid gold. <gasps> Brash gasped, putting her hooves to her mouth in shock and horror. 
In doing so, the light engulfed her as well, and a solid brass-shaped hunk of gold fell to the ground, nearly crushing Quiet Peasant. Yep, that's about what I expected. Apple Peasant remarked, joining Pink and Quiet Peasant as they stared horrified at their friend's new fate. First fashion peasant is cursed, and now brash and book are too? Is this a fairy tale or a f***ing grimdark? Pink Peasant asked in bewilderment, while Fashion Peasant continued snoring nearby, completely unfazed and unaffected. The next morning, Solar Mare was delighted to find the Room of Solid Gold. Incredible! Absolutely marvelous! I've already taken the liberty of having more hay brought from other lands and realms. Even Midnight sold us some of their hay. The fools! <laughs> But alas, there's only one cell left in my dungeons. You ponies, you heroes, have impressed me so much that not only is your debt repaid, but this time I will incentivize you with a reward. If you ponies can turn all of our acquired hay into gold, then I will grant each of you Alicorn Hood. Solar Mare exclaimed, happier than any of the peasants had ever seen her before. Follow me. Solar Mare herself guided the remaining ponies from the second cell to the final one. She had a passing thought that there was less heroes than she remembered there being, but was too preoccupied with visions of gold to care. The door to the final, largest cell was then shut and locked, with three hopeless heroes inside. Oh, please tell me you were able to grab some gold like last time, Pink Peasant! Everything was solid gold! And my reality-bending powers have been nerfed into the ground! What do you expect from me? My, 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 seems quite the dilemma. The stranger said, poofing into the room. His appearance no longer surprised the ponies. You can't get something for nothing. That's not how deals work, little ponies. You must offer me something of great value if you wish my help for a third night in a row. How can we be sure it'll actually be helpful? Ain't a single one of us knows how to sew. Um, actually... And none of us here can cast any magic spells, so just exactly how are you going to help us? Pink Peasant continued, eyeing the stranger suspiciously. Payment first, problem solving after. The stranger insisted. Any ideas? Apple Peasant asked her remaining friends, sarcasm still present in her tone. Pink Peasant declared, rejoicing. She bounced with glee before scooping up Quiet Peasant in her hooves and presenting her to the stranger. We'll give you Quiet Peasant! What? Valuable indeed, the stranger smirked. It's a deal. And with a stomp of his hoof, Quiet Peasant vanished into thin air without a chance to protest. Pinky, what the hey? I'll leave the comment section to hate on you for the curse in this time. The stranger approached Pink Peasant and reached with an outstretched hoof into her mane. Pink Peasant was immediately aghast at the audacity. No pony or creature had ever dared to explore the contents of her mane, especially when she herself could not do so. Hey! Get out of there! What is your problem? Not a problem, but a solution. The stranger said smugly, producing Betsy, the party tank, from Pink Peasant's mane. It landed with a loud thud on the dungeon's stone floor. Betsy? She just needs one little modification. The stranger said, taking a hoof full of a strange golden dust from a pouch hidden beneath his cloak. He sprinkled the dust over Betsy, and the tank shimmered. Now if you feed hay into it, it will shoot out golden confetti when fired. Pretty sure that's not how Tank works. Without another word, the stranger poofed himself away, leaving no trace behind of his presence. Okay, AJ, you go get the hay, and I'll get to the exploding! Are we not gonna talk about the fact that you just traded away Flutter- uh, I mean, quiet peasant like that? The third deal is always the worst one. Duh. When we're alicorns, We'll turn Dash and Twilight back to normal, we'll wake up Rarity, and we'll get Fluttershy back. Alicorn powers are OP, right? I hope you know what you're doing. Apple Peasant said, unconvinced. <laughs> I'm not sure of anything anymore! <laughs> Fire in the hole! 
Pink Peasant exclaimed, blasting the first pile of hay into a sea of golden confetti flakes. The next morning, Queen Solar Mare arrived at dawn and gazed upon her new fortune with delight. As she promised, the two heroes were whisked away to an unknown starry realm, where they were hastily given alicorn horns and wings. The Queen then presented the new alicorns to the awaiting crowd that had gathered at the palace. And I present to you your new queens, Queen Applebutt and Queen Balloonbutt. Your new lack of food problem is on their shoulders and not my own. I quit. I'm sure they'll find your missing hay somewhere and be able to feed you all. She turned to the new alicorns and slyly added under her breath, Who needs the stress of ruling a queendom when you have enough gold to last a thousand lifetimes? <laughs> Ta-ta! Queen Solar Mare teleported herself away, leaving the new queens to the mercy of their new subjects. Applebutt and Balloonbutt's eyes widened in horror when they realized the gathered crowd was not there to celebrate, but had been an angry mob attacking the castle's door. Solar Mare's greed had wasted all of their food supply for winter. They shouted in anger, shaking their hooves, pitchforks, and torches as the ex-queen and her guards loaded her spoils onto an awaiting train nearby. Oh no, you don't! Applebutt whispered angrily, magicking herself and Balloonbutt away. Minutes later, the two monarchs reappeared in the throne room with the golden statues of Book Peasant and Brash Peasant, along with the sleeping Fashion Peasant. I've heard of beauty sleep, but this is ridiculous. This is hardly the time for one of your lackluster jokes, Pinkie Pie. This supposed OP alicorn magic is useless for fixing our friends. How exactly do you suppose we get Fluttershy back? Wake up, Rarity, fix Dash and Twy, and peace that crowd out there. They're faster than a pair of raccoons fighting for scraps in a garbage pail. Okay, okay, okay. Hear me out. We can't stop the story because that stranger pony has us trapped in here, right? Well, I happen to know which story this is, and I know for a fact that all our problems can be solved in one word. Oh, Mr. Stranger. On cue, the mysterious stranger appeared out of nowhere and bowed before the two new monarchs. Your Highnesses, you called? The stranger asked, bemused. We want Quiet Peasant back, and we're willing to make a deal together. Pinky, maybe we should discuss this before we go into something half-cocked and crazy. Applebutt said cautiously, distrustful of her friend's ability to solve their crisis. And what, pray tell, would this deal be? These two solid gold cursed pony friends will be yours! Unless we tell you your name. If we guess at night, you have to give us quiet peasant and fix all of our friends. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, <clears throat> let us out! If you discover my identity, then I will indeed agree to your terms. The stranger said, reaching out his hoof to shake. Now hang on. Applebutt said, trying to protest, but Balloonbutt reached for the hoof shake before she could formulate her words. Deal! Don't worry, AJ. I got this. You are Rumpel Trotskin! That may be my name, but not my identity. If you wish to leave this story, you must tell me who trapped you here oh so cleverly. Better hurry. That crowd out there doesn't sound too merciful. What? Nice going, Pinky. Applebutt said with a long <sighs> sigh of exasperation. All right, let's see. Who would have a grudge against you? Who wouldn't have a grudge against you? No, but, but that's your name. That's how the story works. You can't just break the plot. You mean like you do in every other Pinky Tales you've ever told? <laughs> Got you there, Pinks. Okay, okay, th shut up! Let me think. You're... Uh... You're Twilight! Balloonbutt guessed. Applebutt interrupted Balloonbutt's train of thought by pointing to the solidified book peasant statue with a raised eyebrow. Right, right, some pony not in the story. Uh, so then you're... Queen Chrysalis! Nope. Starlight Glimmer? Reformed my flank. Frayed not. No. If I had my fourth wall breaking powers, I'd just pull up the villain wiki! T-Rick? Sombra? Discord even though he said it wasn't him? 
Nope, nah, uh and nice try, but no. Applebed let out a long, frustrated sigh. She knew this was going to take a while, and that Balloon Butt was too frazzled at being wrong again to come up with the actual right answer. She lounged against the golden brash and magicked herself an apple to eat while she waited for Balloon Butt to list every pony she'd ever suspected. An hour later, Balloon Butt's voice was getting hoarse, and the crowd outside was still as angry as ever. The door they were beating against was weakened, small cracks in the wood indicating that it would soon give way. Applebutt had spent that time mulling over the options of this mysterious pony's identity and had narrowed it down to three suspects in her mind. I know! A weak, hoarse Balloon Butt tried to exclaim. It's so clear! I I've been a fool! You're not a pony at all! You're a gummy! <laughs> it makes so much sense! <laughs> The stranger <laughs> laughed and shook his head. It was Balloon Butt's final straw, and she took her defeat far less gracefully. She launched herself at the stranger, attempting to pull his cloak away and reveal his identity for herself. Show me! Show me you are gummy! I don't believe you! Let me out! Before the scuffle could escalate and the crowd burst through the doors, Applebutt spoke up. I have the answer! Balloon Butt and the stranger looked her way. Balloon Butt falling to the floor with a small oof. Apple Butt confidently trotted to the stranger's side and leaned in to whisper in his ear. How? How did you know? The stranger cried, shocked to be outed at last. But you can't. The story was just getting good. No! Wait, what? Who was it? Since it wasn't Gummy, there were only two ponies left on my list, and they're the ones with the biggest crap with y'all stories. Pound and Pumpkin. Pound and Pumpkin? Pinky, it's been ten years. We told you we're too old for fairy tales. Yeah, princesses, heroes, magic, we live that every day. We want something more exciting. Like Hunger Games. No, the Twilight Saga. Not the princesses, the sparkly vampires. Aw, you silly billies. Growing up and stealing my story-breaking power. I couldn't be more proud. Right. Well, if y'all go with the sparkly vampire one, could you leave me out of it? No. Figures. Well, I guess that's it, everypony. <laughs>